So guys, let's break down the two trades that happened in here at this area. So you'll see that we were not looking at the same data and interpreting it the, uh, differently. Because to look at the same data basically means to look at the same setup. But in here, we actually had two setups. So we have in here this green SMT where gold makes a lower low, okay? And silver makes a higher low. Now this is a bullish reversal divergence, which means that the SMT, which means that, you know, gold going lower, so therefore the SMT is the first thing that appears chronologically speaking. And now we need signs that would tell us that the sell side liquidity that gold just took from under this low is going to be used to pair it with smart money longs. And there we would be looking at the formation of a bullish setup. Now, what is that sign that tells us that the sell side that gold just took will be used for smart money buying is always going to be to wait for a bullish fair value gap, which it was formed in here. Okay, so the second thing that appeared was the fair value gap. So in this case, the SMT, which was the first thing to appear, is not yet confirmed. So we do not know whether gold going under the slow is just a stop hunt, Judas swing, liquidity sweep, whatever you want to call it. We don't know that, okay? It can be that, or it could be just another minor break of structure to the downside and then followed by a little pullback and then would continue to go lower. It can also be that. So you don't know exactly what price action is doing by going and creating a lower low. But seeing that silver is not creating a lower low, now it makes you think, well, maybe silver is showing some incoming strength while gold, by pretending that it does continue to create lower lows and lower highs, it's actually just making a stop hunt, right, under that low. So that would be confirmed by waiting for this SMT to be validated by a bullish fair value gap, okay, which happened here. After that, okay, you don't have to wait for silver to do anything, right? You will just wait for a price to tap into the fair value gap, and when it will create the first um, bullish candle after tapping the FEG and then one bullish candle on the five minute, it would give us the entry confirmation which happened here. Okay, so basically, this candle is our entry candle. Now, the very important aspect about this setup is that you need to make sure that you use a proper stop loss because, in this case, it would not be enough for you to enter here right? And then put the stop loss just a few pips under your entry candle, which would be around here, right? Why? Because remember what I told you in that video that we um, had in that um, Zoom session that we had live a few weeks ago? I told you like this, if your entry candle is not, or if any candle prior to your entry, right? Something from around here, and then your entry candle goes down and then it closes bullish. If nothing from that price action is going to touch the order block, the last order block that price created. And I was telling you, what is the order block in this case? It's not the normal RBV order block that we would normally be thinking about, which would be that candle, which is basically the candidate. Okay, not that one, right? In this case, the order block is basically the last down close candle that price created prior to making that bullish um, fair value gap. Preferably, that last down close candle should also be the lowest down close candle, okay? So in this case, this candle over here is the order block, which was never hit by our entry candle, right? So in this case, remember what I told you. You have two options to put your stop loss. You either put your stop loss under the order block, or if the order block is slightly bigger, you can put your stop loss at the midpoint of your order block like this. So the midpoint of the order block would basically be around that area, okay? Now, if you would have put the stop loss under your entry candle, which is here, you would have been taken out there only for then price to continue to go higher. Not to mention that maybe you would have seen this push to the downside and you would have considered, oh, let me just sell because price took me out over here where I had my entry under the entry, uh, under the, where I have my stop loss under the entry candle and look at this push to the downside. Yeah, let me just sell because now impulses 
could be controlling your mind, okay? So stop loss placement is extremely important for this setup, right? Now the second setup that we had in here, and whoever took the setup, this setup that we marked with green, whoever took it this way, okay, um, you know, having this thought process that I just explained right now, did a very good job, okay? It was the absolute best setup that you could have taken, right? At that moment, at that time, right? Now, after this, we can see another divergence, right? Now, as I said, I just did not see this SMT divergence. I just completely missed it. But then in here, we have the fair value gap, right? So the fair value gap is the first one that appears, okay? And then we see that gold comes down into the fair value gap with this push to the downside, okay? Creating a higher high, right? So gold creates a higher high, stops into the fair value gap, while silver during that same time goes lower, makes a lower low. So in this case, gold creating a higher low and having a bullish FEG on the first price leg of the SMT, right? While silver makes a lower low, this is a bullish continuation SMT. So just think about it like this. So we first had this SMT, which was a bullish reversal. So price was telling us, okay, I am willing to reverse bullish, right? And then we have a bullish continuation SMT. So it's basically just price is reconfirming that, okay, I reversed bullish. And even though I'm making this push to the downside, I actually want to continue to push higher. Okay. I'm going to continue the bullishness that I just confirmed previously with this bullish reversal SMT. Okay. So in this case, in this case, having this bullish continuation SMT, right? In this case, we consider this as the first price of the, uh, as the first leg of the SMT. And then this is the second leg of the SMT. So we have the FVG on the first leg, right? And now we have the entry candle on the second leg. Okay. So in this case, we want that as gold goes down and does not create a lower low. Okay. It does not create a lower low. Silver should go down, create a lower low. And then in order for us to enter the trade, we want a bullish candle on gold, right? On the five minute. But at the same time, we want the same candle at the same hour that is bullish on gold. We want the same to be bullish on silver. So we want to see that silver, after it sweeps the sell side under there, it starts to reject by creating a bullish candle. So basically, it just created support in here. Okay, because what is essentially what is support? Support is when a bullish candle is created after a bearish candle. Okay, so price goes down, creates a bearish candle, and then you have a bullish candle. This is support, right? So basically, silver is selling us, well, I took sell side, but I'm creating support after having taken sell side. And at the same time, with the same candle, gold creates a bullish candle after it came down and it rebalanced this bullish fair value gap. So we had one setup here, okay, the bullish reversal SMT, this one. And then we had one entry here for the bullish continuation SMT. So even though it might seem as the same data, the same price action, it's actually not, okay? Because reading candles this way, it's just telling you, like ICT says, it's telling you the narrative, the story, right? So anyone who took this setup did well, right? Because they didn't have all this price action that I'm covering here. They didn't have it, right? So based on what price action we had at that moment, which is this one, that was the setup that happened, okay? And if you put your stop loss where you should put your stop loss, which is at the midpoint of the untapped order block or under the order block, you would not have been taken out by this push that basically comes to create the second uh, bullish uh, continuation SMT.